Thank you again, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you again to judges. So where does the power come from to see a race to the end? It comes from within. And this is a simple fact. The power to achieve anything in life has to come from within at first. This is a quote from the famous sports movie, Chariots of Fire. And I'm using this quote simply because in our case, at our NGO, we want to be able to highlight and detail to people what sports development could do. Sports development is something that we've talked about that could stop wars and could change lives. But not just that for a simple fact. For example, I'll, I'll give myself a, as an example. Talking about team sports and the most popular sports in Nigeria, which is football, and laying the instance of why it's important for us to have a detailed academy performance plan, which is what we aim to uh, put into the main structure for our policy at our NGO. While I was at university doing my master's degree, I wrote my topic, uh, Assessment of European Football Clubs Efficiency. And what I did was I used parametric, non-parametric analysis, uh, and I used data development analysis to be able to study and find out football clubs that were more efficient. The, most fo the football club that was the most efficient among all the football clubs I did my analysis on was Ajax, simply because they were able to use and uh, maximize the academy products that they had to be able to get some type of financial remuneration for the football club. Now, all these things could be achieved if you have an academy performance plan and you have what we call the three cycles. You have a macro cycle, you have a, a meso cycle, and then you have a micro cycle. The macro cycle will consist of the coaching syllabus. A coaching syllabus is something where you could have all the criteria and everything you need to develop your football players, you have all of them in the coaching syllabus. Now, your coaching syllabus is predicted uh, all under your uh, defined football philosophy. A football philosophy is what kind of football team are you? Are you a counter-attacking football team? Are you a possession-based football team? What type of football team are you? That's what your football philosophy is. Now, after your coaching block, you now have where you have your individual coaching session. Now, this way, you already understand that everything that is going to be done as a sequence in your football club or in your football academy is going to be all predicted, uh, all under your football philosophy. That way you know that all the football players that you're developing at your football club will understand the facets of that type of football, that you brand of football that you want to play. And this is what we aim to bring in our foundation. We want to bring it in a way that even at the national team level, we could have a structure. We could have people, we could have coaches, we could have uh, scouts, who understand what is needed for them when they are trying to go out and scout for football players. Now, this just doesn't end with like the team sports. We also have an idea for um, individual sports, like athletics. We want people to know, the scouts to know what they want to look for. And we want to aim to create a database where football, uh, where athletes, sorry, who are going to be found at the elementary level or secondary school level. We can have all their data stored up in our database and all this, uh, outstanding talents could be followed and we could make sure that their careers or their talents never peter out. This is all one thing we want to ensure that at the end of the day, we're able to create opportunities for more people because we want to create educated professionals. Not everyone who wants to be a football player or who wants to be an athlete should be able to do that. Parents are scared to let their children play football or go to academies because they're worried that if they have a career ending injury, then that's where it all ends. But we are, with our NGO, we want to create opportunities for people to be able to play and also to be able to learn. Because currently we just know that in 2009, after the, uh, the policy that was made, 61% of sports administrators or stakeholders hadn't even seen the document. This is a figure that we aim to change. We do not want that situation happening again. We want to bring all the stakeholders involved. I want to make sure that football and sports development is something that we put forward. I know what to lay down. Um, like I said earlier, the two problems that tackles the uh, sport development in Nigeria is funding and management. Now, according to stats, Nigeria has no structure in place to develop and train its coach, apart from the occasional CAF and FIFA short-term coaching courses. Also, the lack of professional to drive development in the sector sees 83% of sport administrators in Nigeria do not have the knowledge of how to actually run sports sector. So this means in the management itself, there is no structure. And this is the problem we aim to tackle at this NGO. We are going to bring in, like he said, the syllabus that is expatriates or foreign professionals who would come and give a syllabus to the people who are supposed to actually manage the, the 
the sector because the truth is there's actually a disconnect between the management, the team, athletes, and the Nigeria Athletic Federation officials itself because the, uh, the sector is actually bent and, 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 and actually tied to the funds from the government. It's an issue for them to actually disconnect themselves from political issues. So this means when there is more funding, the sports sector will be independent of the laws and the policies of the government and would have its own policy that would be implement, implemented from the federal state to the local government level. And this is where we will see the institutionalization of sports development. That's from the primary level to the secondary school level to the tertiary institution level. And this would also bring about sports education, like you mentioned earlier. Also, we would have all these things in place and this would help the implementation of the sports policy or development policy that was brought about in 2009. Finally, we'd like to say we also aim to look at having facilities because if there's one thing we understand from our experience with sports is you're more independent when you own most of your tangible fixed assets. Now, what are your tangible fixed assets? Tangible fixed assets, I think, they have to do like stadium, training facilities, and this is something we aim to have our NGO, to create some sort of tangible fixed assets, a safe home where we could train all these athletes. Now, let us all remind ourselves that as long as we have a steady and improved sports industry, we're going to be able to have more professionals. Not everyone has to wear a suit and tie every day and walk into the office. Not everyone needs to do a nine to five every day. Sports is one thing where your color doesn't matter, your tribe doesn't matter. You're talented enough, you get an opportunity. And this is what we want to aim to give people better opportunities to succeed in life and to succeed in things that they want to do. Thank you.